Hello everyone and welcome back to another read aloud. Uh, we're still on the book chapter three, Mason at Blue Hill. So you know we just left uh, chapter two and uh, Mason was visiting her best friend Margaret and they were just kind of talking about her leaving and how saddened they both were that she had to leave. But there's a uh, understanding between both of them that she really needs to go she got a full scholarship to a girls boarding school and uh, it's just an awesome opportunity but as you know Mason is struggling with uh, having to meet new people and then the people that she's uh, going to be staying with at the boarding school all those young ladies have money they're rich and even the black girls and there's only four of them including her five um, they have money too, so she's struggling with that because she knows she doesn't have a lot and she's been living with her grandma. So she got a lot of emotions going on. Right now we're getting ready to read chapter 3 and chapter 3 is uh, where we will meet Miss Dale uh, and Miss Dale's daughter Hattie who um, uh, Mason has some issues with and so we'll learn a little bit more about her as we read chapter 3. So let's get started. Any mini miny mo, let's catch little Jay by his toe. If he hollers, don't let him go. Any mini miny mo, Miss Dell sang, pulling on little Jay's toe. He squealed, wiggling his feet away from her. Margaret's little brother Jay would be sixteen months soon, and he could walk almost anywhere. We're sitting on Margaret's stoop because it's too hot to stay upstairs. Miss Dell and Hattie had joined us, folding out chairs at the top of the stoop. They lived right downstairs from Margaret and loved our company. At least that's what I heard Miss Dell tell Grandma a while back. Margaret and I sat at their feet on the top step. The stoop was hard and warm underneath me. A lawn chair on my own would have been nice. You got uh, any more soda? I asked Margaret tipping her glass to my mouth. It was as empty as my own. The block was noisy as usual with kids running up and down, darting between cars and hiding behind rows of garbage cans. Margaret and I were too cool to be bothered with silly neighborhood kids. But as I watched them around everybody up for a game of kick the can, I thought maybe I should join them. Just one last time since my days on Madison Street were numbered. Sing, Mason, Margaret said, yanking my arm. You have a good voice. Then she turned back towards Miss Dell and Hattie and started it up again. Let's go. Hey, let's go. Hey, let's go. Any, many, miny, mo. Catch that baby by his toe. Margaret sang at the top of her lungs. It's a dumb song, I said. Miss Dale cut her blue eyes at me. In the near darkness, they looked even stranger against her dark skin. Hmm, she said. Then she gave Lil' Jay a shake and stood him up on her lap. Look at this baby, pretty legs, she cooed. I've seen better legs on a table, I said. Miss Dale looked over at me again and then over at her daughter, Hattie who was working the hem of a dress as she sang. Hattie would be 20 in December, and Miss Dale had told Grandma that Hattie couldn't move out of her, thir of her teenage years fast enough. I knew what that meant. Hattie was downright evil sometimes, and besides that, she didn't like me much. Up with it already, Mason, Hattie said, moving the dress across her lap and picking up the stitch again. The skirt was white, that kind of stretchy material Grandma didn't allow me to wear because she said I was too young to bring, be trying off, trying to show off curves I didn't even have yet. But the minute I got a curve, I was going to use my money to buy a dress like Hattie's. What's snipping your nerves and making you so evil tonight? She's got the blue heel blues, Margaret said. Sometimes I wondered if somebody had passed Hattie over in a brain department. And I sure don't feel like 
hearing nobody's bad singing tonight. Miss Dale reared back in her chair like she had some, seen something scary. You are evil. I wish, I said, holding up a finger. I wish there was just one person on this crowded stoop who could understand what's going on inside my head. Just one. I'm not asking for a hundred people. I'm not even asking for 50 or 10. Just one person. I understand, Mason, Margaret said. I'm your best friend. So, of course, I understand. And Mason, Miss Dale said, you know I understand. That's different, Miss Dale. You have special powers. Miss Dale had been born with the gift of clairvoyance. She could look right into a person's head and know everything that was going on there. Some people were scared of her. Not me and Margaret, though. There wasn't much we wouldn't give to have powers, have her powers. I folded my arms across my chest and glared out into the street. The street lights flickered on, casting a yellow glow out over the block. Eavesdropping right inside a person's head doesn't count. Well, don't expect me to understand you, Mason, Hattie declared. Don't worry, I said. I don't. If anyone had asked, I'm sure neither of us could have said what it was we didn't like about each other. Miss Dale said we were too much alike. She had a hard time understanding how we could like ourselves, let alone like each other. You're both so hateful at times, she said. Hattie once said, I thought I was cute, and I said back, I think, therefore, I am, which she thought was a smart aleck remark. For a teenager, she didn't have much of these much of a non sense of humor. Too bad. She was pretty. It's kind of a waste. Don't you two get started, Miss Dale Warren, shifting little Jay on her lap. Now, Mason, I know you're a fool of I know you're full of confusion about this school, but don't you worry your pretty head over anything. I'll be with you. That's what everybody says, Miss Dale. I'll be with you. I'll be with you. But when I get to that school, it's going to be me, Mason Singh, A-L-O-N-E, alone. Never, Miss Dale said softly. What? I thought I hadn't heard her right. Miss Dale's brows moved into toward each other, sending the lines above them deeper into the, her forehead. I said, never. If you live to be 175, Mason Singh, and you too, Margaret, and even you, Lil' J, you'll never be alone. You understand me? Margaret and I shook our heads quickly. I didn't believe it or understand it, but I wasn't about to dispute Miss Dell's word. Even Lil' J moved his head up and down when he saw us doing it. Miss Dell leaned back in her chair. That's all I have to say. Any, many, miny, mo, Hattie began. Let's catch Mason by her toe. If she hollers, don't let her go. Any, many, miny, mo. I felt a warm drop and looked up at the sky. There was no moon in sight. In a second, I felt another drop. See, Hattie, I said, your bad singing is making it rain. Okay, well, that's the end of chapter three. So we see the relationship that um, Mason has with Miss Dale and the relationship she has with Miss uh, Hattie, Miss Dale's daughter, and they do not like each other. But yet still, I love the relationship that she has with those three. And we will get ready to start chapter four next. So see you soon. I hope you enjoyed the story.